Hello, and thanks for being here. I'm Jason Murray here with John Ryan Hamilton. How you doing? Um, and, we have, <laughs> and we have a treat for you. We have a best of five legacy money match, and it's a max on max. Boom. We got hundred dollars on the line. Max Gilmore versus uh Max Kamanowski, aka yep. Max Torsion and Twinless Twin. They're uh maybe better known for for uh two very bright legacy minds here in the community uh going at a uh a best of five here they've both brought three decks that they're going to play and they know each other's deck lists and they know the matchups so um looking forward to seeing some some really good magic from some some really insightful minds here definitely and I think we have the deck list, so let's go right into a deck deck now. Perfect. Mono Red Prison, Max Gilmore. Uh, the Max versus Max certainly won't get confusing. We'll either say uh, last names or handles, probably. Um, this looks like a pretty stock Mono Red list uh, post uh, Modern Horizons 2, with Furies being the latest edition. Um, you've played a lot of this deck. Uh, John, is there anything here that stands out to you? Uh not really. Uh, Red Prison is kind of a strategy that has fallen off in the in the Modern Horizons 2 era. Cards like Prismatic Ending and Mark Tide Regent have really kind of dampered a lot of the Chalice of the Void strategies. That being said, uh, this deck still has a lot of powerful tools in the metagame. Uh, in addition to getting cards like Fury, which really helped uh, some of the matchups that Red Prison struggled with, you, uh, cards like Blood Moon have uh, have almost never been better in Legacy. There are a lot of decks that have that fold to a blood moon that haven't in the past. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and looking over the rest of the, the deck list here, uh, we also see Den of the Bugbear as a, as a fairly new addition. Something else that the deck really gets to kind of add for free is just another uh, way to kind of have another threat, almost a, another rabble master of sorts, really kind of flesh out the, uh, the threat density of this list. Yeah. And up against Max Gilmore, uh, Twinless Twin bringing Is It Delver. Uh, this is sort of the consensus post Ragavan list with four Delvers coming in the threat slots and uh, main deck Brazen Bar and Holy Heat and a couple of Mishra's Bobbles to round out the sort of flex slots. Um, over in the sideboard, though, uh, looks like pretty pretty reasonable spread. Uh, it looks like 15 cards or. There's a couple, a couple of duplicates there, but very diverse, uh, flexible, flexible options that Delver's brought. Yeah, I'd say this is a almost perfectly stock Delver list, and it's it's hard to uh, to tinker with Delver outside of a couple cards at this stage. We'll see, we see maybe the Brazen Borrower, the Unholy Heat, two Bobbles in the main as like four kind of flex slots in the main deck, and then in the sideboard we'll we see a lot of cards that you'll see in every Delver sideboard. Stuff like blasts and extra forces, submerge, meltdown. Uh, uh, the one thing that we do see is uh, energy flux, which is an interesting uh, kind of carryover from vintage. All right. It looks like we're into the game already. This is a turn one chalice of the void from Max Torsion that's going to be met by a force of will. Uh, we have a threat behind in Goblin Rabble Master uh, and a lot of lands on Twinless Twin side. Yeah, Twinless really wishing it was won the die roll there. Being able to daze a chalice is a lot nicer than uh, having to force it. Yeah, though Max Extortion does have the secret mode of Simeon Spirit Guide, Counter Your Days. This is available. True. This bobble has got to deliver some action. Yeah, especially with a second Rival Master and this third land lined up for uh, Max Extortion here. Uh really putting Twinless Twin to the, to the test here. we got to find some some bolts ASAP. Now, a fun thing, uh, looks like Twinless Twin is probably lining up here, is activating Bobble and stacking the trigger with your uh, Delver of Secrets. If you look at your own top card, you know if it'll flip your Delver or not, and you can stack your, uh, your triggers accordingly. You can flip the Delver to the card if you know it's good, or if it's not, you can draw the card off the Bobble before your Delver flips and get another look. So we'll see if he does that, and indeed chooses to draw a card first. Draws a land, and then flips the Delver. 
That is not the red card we were hoping for. Yeah, it's not a bad one, but it might be a little bit too slow in the face of Rabble Master into Rabble Master. Looks like Delver's going to stay back and try to trade with the Legion War Boss. And then... Yeah, definitely not winning this race. Feels like Max Torsion. Oh, and with Ooh. another Rabble Master. <laughs> Feels like uh, Max Dorshin firmly in the driver's seat here. This expressive iteration needs to find multiple lightning bolts for uh, for Twinless Twin to even keep his head above water. Rebel Master not even allowing Max Dorshin to click through his attack step there. Just send everyone into the Ren Zone. Trade and... makes sense. Still has to take four, leaving a million power in play. And this Delver does not flip another Ooh. land. This is looking bad. We need Bolt Bolt. Merktide? Merktide could do some work. Merktide plus yeah. Bolt? Oh, nope, that's blue, a blue mana. Blue spell. No. All right. This, uh, this Merktide region probably not going to make the cut here after uh, Max Dorsch is going to untap with about a million power in play. And the, notably, the Delver not flipping means that it can't even trade with the Goblin Rabble Master. It will have to, to chump or he'll take about a million damage. Yeah. Twinless picking up a daze off the ponder will not end up mattering because of the spear guide like that you mentioned. It's sitting in the hand the whole game, ready to counter a daze, and counter it does. Boom. And that's the ball game. Oh, she wrote. All right, coming in from the Delver side, uh, have some sweepers to improve against the goblin tokens it looks like there's a meltdown that can clear up uh chalice of the void and force negations look like a good include here uh anything else stand out to you uh that all tracks uh I don't, i'm curious if we'll see end the festivities come in it's a little awkward because it doesn't kill rabble masters but cleaning up goblin tokens could matter but the rough definitely comes in the meltdown uh and the for and the extra force of negation are all pretty clear contenders on the Red Prison side, you have a lot of experience with this deck. Uh, what do you think uh, Max Gilmore is going to bring in to improve in game two? So you kind of turn into a uh, control deck against Delver a lot of the time. You just board in a bunch of your removal. A lot of your lock pieces are less good. The Blood Moons are obviously pretty bad. Trinisphere can be hit or miss. It's a lot worse, especially on the draw. So I wouldn't be surprised to see these Bone Crushers and this Dead Gun especially come in. Dead Gun being nice. Uh, killing a Delver or bouncing a Merktide region if you need to. Interesting point of contention is whether or not he's Max's Gilmore is going to bring in Leyline of the Void. Uh, it can definitely hose Delver, but outside of your opening hand, obviously, it is close to uncastable. So um, we'll see if that's a that's a choice that Max Dorshin decides to to pull the trigger on. Yeah, yeah sort of a Leyline versus Blood Moon as your answers to Merktide are certainly worth considering. Um, there's a big Chandra in the board that may or may not come in. Six but, mana okay. is hard to get to against the uh, the Wasteland deck, the aggressive Wasteland oh. deck, notably. And we do have a Ley Line. Yeah. His hand is pretty miserable, but <laughs> he might keep just based on uh, put this Ley Line into play and hope that uh, Twinless Twin kept a hand of Dragon's Rage Channelers and Merktide Regents, which he's going to be unpleasantly surprised <laughs> by uh, Twinless Twin's triple bolt hand. And the Delver is the threat, too. Yeah. Let's see. More lands. Not what the doctor ordered, certainly. Max Delver's... Dorsen is going to get some help right from the start here. Delver not flipping is some help. Yep. Plays out the Dragon's Rage Channeler, keeps the Ponder in reserve for blue card. Makes a lot of sense. Also just sets up the Darcy to juice the Ponder a little bit more. Really find what he needs. Chalice of the Void is a great draw from Extortion. Yeah, we can play a Chalice around a daze. Unfortunately, like you said, going to get forced pitching this Ponder. Dragon Surge Channeler probably tries to set up the uh, the Delver of Secrets. Looks like he keeps on top. Mm -hmm. And with three bolts in hand versus the deck that is primarily creature-based now, we've seen the Red Prison decks in the past few years shy away from ensnaring bridges and chandras and karns in favor of these attackers and that's not looking good against three lightning bolts maybe max will find another chalice of the void first we'll, we'll see 
twinless twin looking like the uh the goblins deck this time. Whoa. That fury. That's quite the draw. We can promox second city of traders to play that's fury around days and completely wrath him and leave ourselves with a three three here. It's yeah. Like exactly what an extortion is gonna do. Fortunately for uh for twinless twin, he does have a bolt to uh, even the uh the battlefield and still looking favored despite this two for one. Almost a three for one. Yeah. When you factor in the bolt coming down. He also had to like lose cards with the city of traders and the chrome mock, so it evens out. Yeah. Evens out for sure. So Bolt Bolt Ponder versus nothing here, but Layla in the Void does shut off a lot of his deck, so it's not like all of uh of Twinless Twins draws are good here. Looks like a card went into exile. So it didn't like what he saw on top. Yeah. Ponder good, brainstorm good. Just looking for more Delver of Secrets. Maybe that one of Brazen Bar were to bounce this ley line of the void. And obviously he lands to cast him. Yeah. If he can find a oh got a threat. Element is good. Well, we have another bolt target, I should say. Yeah. Not gonna be getting any attacks in quite yet. Gotta burn through these bolts somehow. Yep. Better yeah. your creatures than your face. Yeah. Does make him fetch here. Would be maybe nice to line up that fetch land with this brainstorm, but probably a surplus of uh of those effects. It's not that hard to make brainstorm a good card. Yeah. I would almost expect Brainstorm to be held uh, for a few turns if Twinless Twins top decks cooperate. See so yeah. him play out the island rather than holding it, just trying to get mana developed. Oh, another 3-3 three, three Double Striker coming in. I wouldn't be surprised if he decides not to play that yet. Yeah, having yeah. to lose the city, expose the Fury to daze, and not clean up any creatures with it. Notably with this Leyline in play, Fury does answer any single creature or even multiple creatures out of uh out of the delver deck so sitting on it as a removal spell kind of makes sense to me especially uh with this city losing the city of traders as well that brainstorm is not delivering the goods yeah days wasteland delta some temptation to keep this wasteland around but i think we just have to shuffle yeah sh maybe shuffle like the steam vents and the Days instead of the Seamans in the Wasteland, they kind of do a similar thing, right? Yeah, I think you we'll see him shuffle the Wasteland, but... You almost want to combine the Wasteland and the Days. Wasteland the City, then have a Days up for the next threat, but obviously you gotta put back two cards. Right. Not having Ancestral Recall. <laughs> yeah. Does yeah. keep the Days around. I think that makes sense, too. It's a, it's a potential blue card if Force Whale's a draw, which is... I was gonna say might end up hitting this Fury, but, uh... Max Gilmore with this Angel Tomb draw. Probably not hitting this Fury anymore. We yeah. we saw uh, Max really respect Days uh, with the first Fury cast. He city cast played a City of Traders into a City of Traders just to play around it, so I imagine he'll be cognizant of that. Stomp and Bone Crusher Giant's a great draw here. Answers another threat. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Twinless misses on creature again to see Max throw this stomp at face and then untap and play a three or a four three. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking at exactly what he's doing. Yeah, four three is a four turn clock or yeah, it's another you gotta, bolt. Yeah, I get this game over with somehow. It's bone yeah. pressure gonna get double dazed. I think uh Max Storchen would be ecstatic if that happens. Yes. I mean he's got plenty of lands in hand. I think if he wanted to play around double days, he would have done it. I think he's happy to throw away a 4-3 for two cards. Yep. Yeah, once you don't cast your 3-3 three, three double strike, when you draw it, you've established that you're not trying to win the game through combat damage. So yeah. converting his threats to for Twinless Twins counters in any fashion is great. Yeah. What was looking like dire straits there at the start of the game uh max versions really turned this around and i think in no small part at all because of this ley line of the void just it does in fact put a, a real damper on on a lot of delver's threats yeah, looks like a delver's added to the hand off the ponder um yeah i mean if if not for the ley line the fury would not have been able to kill two creatures uh when it was cast and 
um, this Murktide would be in play and Max Storch would probably be dead, but instead we have a ley line. Now that Twinless finally finds a creature, we see Max pull the trigger on a Fury. Get that two for one here, trade with the Delver and the Bolt, and both players run an eye empty here. Another removal spell means that Twinless is enslaved from this, uh, from this war boss. Top Pick Legion war boss, and we're back to a square one. Both players sitting on nothing. Which, yeah. uh, who do you think that favors? I have to imagine it favors the Red Prison deck here with this ley line in play. Yeah. Um, not only can we see that Twinless doesn't have uh, removal left over, there's three bolts in exile, there's an unholy heat in exile, looks like a dead gone in exile. Uh, there's yeah. not many ways to kill this fury. But yes. Yeah, and I think Max Dorshin also sensed that. We saw the, like, the, the, the little pause on the second main there before he decides to cast the Fury. I think he was also mulling over, look, my opponent's got three bolts and an unholy heat in the bin already, this rough tumble. I need to end this game before my opponent finds something. This 3-3 three, three double striker is big and does not have a lot of answers anymore. I'm just yeah. going to slam it. And then immediately, Twinless Twin picks up this Force of Will, which would have been nice, but it's right. now going to take six a turn. He's up to five lands, so these dragons are maybe hard castable. Oh, there's a wasteland. Unfortunately, hard casting is uh, not going to quite be enough here because he's going to go to four, and then if he draws a seventh land, he's going to cast a three three, which now chump blocks the fury. Okay, if it's a fetch land, uh, doesn't even matter. It'll be it. Uh, fury has double strike. Yeah. All right, so we have a turn to draw a bolt. The classic uh, seven mana Murktide region. This card's a lot more balanced at seven mana. I mean, look at all these spells in exile. It's just not not be, yeah, casting these dragons. Yeah, we're going to yeah. jump block here. What's Twinless looking for besides maybe the fourth bolt? Does he have a lot of other cards he could find? Uh, I think they all involve expressive iteration because he has to kill the fury and remove the ley line. Yeah. So he needs to find a bolt and a brazen bar and more things. Yeah, because now he's had to exhaust two more 3-3. Three, three, now that he's at seven mana, he's had to use them as chump blocking. Right. And it, and if Max Sorshin had waited even a turn, um, Twinless Twin would have been able to line up these uh, three threes as, uh, as a double block and been able to two for one himself to get the Fury off the board at least. Yeah, that was. A, I, I really liked the the discipline with that Fury the second Fury versus the third Fury cast. Like, we saw Twinless immediately draw the Force of Will for it, and this game could have been very different. We see Max has, Max Torsion has nothing. And if he got the Fury Force of Will, and then Twinless turns around and casts two Murktide regions as three threes, we could see a very different gameplay out. Yeah, I mean, the Max is at uh, 11, so all these Ancient Tombs add up. And um, looks like Expressive Duration... Yeah, Twins Twins. Into Twins expressive, Twins. okay. Twins his wheels a little bit. He's got the mana to do it. We have this Delver to chump block this Fury if we need it. Yeah. Still looking for a Bolt. Still looking for yeah, he's three. more cards. Over half his deck, but he's down three Lightning Bolts. Second Delver, this can also chump block the Fury for another turn. Ooh. Oh. Petty Theft plus Force of Will does answer the Fury. Okay. Oh, we have a 2 2. <laughs> I mean, it's very good. 2 2 scary because we're going to have to go to 2 to counter this, uh, to counter this Fury. And then we have a 2 2 versus a 3 1 that can't block a ground creature and a 1 1. So, uh, while this so was we're good. We're back to needing that bolt, huh? Yeah. We could draw this. Uh, was, there was only one unholy heat in the deck, I think. Maybe we, so we can't draw a second one. Right. We could draw another uh, third Merc Titration at this point. That would check a 3-3 three, three would check a 2-2. Two, two. Lane's not going to do it. We're in uh, Chump Block plus player 3-1. Mac Storchen notably at 7 here from all these Ancient Tombs. If Twinless can find a little bit more stalling. Oh! The Shatter Skull Smashing. This does more than just pitch to Chrome Mox, in fact. It does have text on the front side, and it's a kill your Dolphin and attack you for lethal. Yep. And Max Sorshin takes it down. Pretty decisive two games there. We saw a lot of uh, Red Prison firing on all cylinders. Yeah, very different games between game one being so aggressive, uh, goblin, 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 and then 
uh, game two being so controlling, uh, really sort of showcases the two extremes that deck can play. Yeah. Really wants to sideboard into a bunch of removal spells versus stuff like Delver and just kind of sit back, kill your stuff. The, the, the ley line looked really impressive. I wasn't super on board with it. I didn't really know how I felt, but it looked really good there. I wouldn't be surprised if it's totally correct. Yeah, I mean, uh, Max Sorshin kept ley line and five mana sources and won the game. <laughs> so, turns out your one spell is pretty good. Yeah. Ley line really doing a number on Delver. All yeah. right, so... Now into round two. We have an exciting matchup here. Uh, Doomsday versus Tempo Doomsday. Um, Max Storshin has been uh, piloting a Tempo... Yep, here we go. Uh, this is a Doomsday deck that attempts to cast the card Doomsday, which will exile all but the five cards of his library, and then he can kill with a Thassa's Oracle and an empty library. However, uh, Max Gilmore has also added Merktide Regents, Temporal Masteries, and some other creatures so that he can play a different game plan aside from a pure combo build. Um, yeah. This is at some point I'm going to have to look up the the text on the back half of Malevolent Hermit because I've not played enough. Uh, I don't know Innistrad Limited to know what that card does. It's a uh, definitely a two two flyer on the backside uh, for th I think it's three mana. Yeah, I um, think it like doesn't let your non creature spells be countered on the backside or something like that. Relevant yeah. to combo deck interests, and it also like mana leaks non creature spells on the front side by killing itself. Yeah, seems like a pretty flexible card, given that this is a combo on combo matchup. Yeah, uh, it definitely seems like a reasonable powerhouse. And on Twinless Twin Slide, we have the more uh, pure uh, Turbo Doomsday build. Uh, we have two personal tutors to find our, our combo, and a bunch of cantrips and counterspells to enable the kill to resolve. Yeah, this looks like very stock Doomsday as opposed to the, the spicy Doomsday on the other side, maybe. We got your normal stuff, a bunch of packed negations, uh, personal tutors, the full street rates and Edge of Autumns and Ideas Unbound. In the sideboard, we even see the Shell Dock Emrakul sideboard um, Doomsday Plan B, as it were. Yep. Plays around uh, cards like Endurance and uh, Corpor Orb it's by putting Emrakul into play. Um, who do you think is favorite here? So my gut as maybe the least experienced Doomsday player on the planet Earth is that the normal, st the stock Doomsday deck is favorite versus Tempo Doomsday. Hmm. I would put a bet on uh, Tempo Doomsday just because it can win a game without resolving its namesake card. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm torn between the idea that Delver has a good Doomsday matchup, so we would maybe think that Tempo Doomsday being like kind of a pseudo Delver role would have a good Doomsday matchup, but at the same time, just the consistency of uh of the standard Doomsday list maybe is just it might just be a race to the uh to resolving your spell and the stock lists are very good at that. Looks like we have some generically good combo hands from both players. Uh, cantrips on Max Sturgeon's side. Uh, force of Will to protect Twinless on the draw, as well as a Brainstorm to clean up the rest of his hand. Find what he needs to win the game. Yeah, and this this does look like a little bit of what you had mentioned, where uh, Max Sturgeon doesn't have to find a Doomsday to win this game. He can beat down this level at Hermit and sit and play and counter a Doomsday. He can ponder into some like Merktide regents. He even ships away the Dark Ritual, which would be sort of an A plus B combo with Doomsday. Yeah, in favor um, of keeping this temporal mastery, really it feels like uh, Max Dorshin has solidified his role as the uh, the control player, and he's just keeping this temporal mastery because it pitches to Force the Floor rather than a Dark Ritual to pitch to a Doomsday, as it were. Right. Finds a daze off his ponder. And Twinless and is just going to pass. You can tell that Twinless Twin is not my Doomsday opponent because they didn't immediately top deck Doomsday <laughs> and turn one me with Day's Force back. Right. He's going to convert a Brainstorm against Malevolent Hermit here. Uh, Unearth is a very good draw. If Maxortion finds Black Mana, is he can just put this Malevolent Hermit back in play. Yeah, the front side might notably be better than the back side in terms of playing this tempo plan, being able to counter your opponent's spells maybe more important than protecting your own. 
an uncounterable mana leak for Doomsday seems kind of hard for uh, for Twinless to navigate through. Yeah, it just kind of requires Twinless to have an extra Dark Ritual. Yeah, or maybe even this Lion's Eye Diamond. You could maybe pay for the mana leak with your LED and build your pile with no cards in hand for the oh. following turn. So, Twinless lets that go. Maybe he's just trying to win this turn. So, oh, yeah. Prize did not see the days there, but maybe his plan is just to draw Doomsday and kill him. And it looks <laughs> like that's a uh, reasonable choice. Huh. Uh, this looks... Oh, and we have a street rate to draw into the pile as well. Yeah, this might be a same turn kill, right? With this pedal to counter this daze. Yep. I'm not super familiar with Doomsday piles, but I think a lot of them can kill from one mana straight rate. Maybe not through this daze, though. Uh, well, Twinless can daze back. Days back, that's true. Also just has the force behind. Yeah, yeah. Um, true. but yes, they can kill from one mana using Consider. Uh, we'll see... But like we see Twinless uh, mill deep analysis and draw lines. Do I diamond have deep analysis in his deck. I don't know if all the doomsday lists are on that, but I do know that consider regardless of deep analysis can usually mm. form some kills with like an extra card in hand. Well, okay. I guess we'll find out here. Unfortunately, I think we're seeing Max Torsion's view, so we can't watch <laughs> Twinless put together his, do his doomsday pile. We have to sit here and speculate. Yeah, two but, D and D players, expert commentators for uh, mapping out what a Doomsday player is doing. Yeah, this is the uh, my experience with Doomsday is is this moment uh, waiting for fifty six cards to enter the exile zone and to find out which way my opponent's going to kill me. Yes, and then I, I get to open up the exile map and then look through all the cards and be like, all right, I think I figured them out, and I can't beat it zero percent. Just I'm why am I looking at these? Fortunately, decks that have cards like Force of Will usually have a little bit more play to them in the in the post Doomsday. Yeah, I played against Max Torsion on Doomsday the other night, and um, he turn one Doomsday me, and I checked the Exile Zone, and I told him that having two dazes in his hand was unfair. <laughs> Yeah, usually I just kind of look around for Thassa's Oracle, see if they messed it up. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, if there's not a consider deep analysis street, kill. Yeah, street Wraith and Brainstorm, I have to imagine there's a kill there. You Street Wraith into like LED, you cast Brainstorm, and you crack the LED. I don't know. <laughs> this is probably a death, right? Oh no, you can't um, crack the LED because you need to keep up the force the whole time. So you probably want to build a pile that doesn't crack an LED. <laughs> probably not. Uh, Twinless doesn't know that he need, only needs um, extra mana, but I, I imagine this days this Doomsday would have been Force of Will if Max if uh, Max Torsion had it. But Days is a card that definitely wants should be on his radar at least. Yeah. Now, does Max have any... Let's say Twinless doesn't kill right here. Does Max have anything he could potentially draw into? Could he find something that does So, anything? once your opponent casts Doomsday, uh, whether you're uh, a deck like Death and Taxes or a deck like Doomsday, uh, you are just trying to beat what their pile is. So, um, I think what is potentially possible is the mana leak on the hermit allows him to set up mm. so he's low on he's not going to be quite low enough on life where we can get through yeah twin was going to eight here this mobile one hermit not going to to go fast enough even if uh, max top decks temporal mastery and doesn't get it countered yeah um if he draws like Force of Will, maybe Force plus Days plus Malevolent Hermit might be able to stop. I don't know if Twinless has the uh, the main deck Cavern of Souls to beat that much counterspell action. Yeah, I have to assume that there's not a deep analysis because yeah. we would have seen for... things go. Th yeah, uh, doesn't look like there's a Cavern of Souls in the list. Yeah, I think his Cavern of Souls was in the sideboard, if I recall correctly. Yes which maybe makes uh, this pile a little bit harder. Yeah, we can go back to the sideboard yeah. here. Yeah, Cavern Results on the sideboard. No deep analysis to, to be seen here. Probably just an Ideas Unbound pile. 
can you figure that out without like i think the big thing is he's trying to kill on the same turn but he doesn't want to crack led because he wants to have this force in hand to counter anything so if we like draw into the ideas i'm bound by have to crack an led to do it and he can counter the ideas it looks like like we have a brainstorm i have to imagine this gets dazed and then dazed back and then killed probably um Maybe you don't daze and then hope your opponent messes up. And Max Orchard's yeah. line might be hope he plays into this daze, cracks an LED, and doesn't have mana for the status of Oracle. Like, if Max Orchard might be thinking, if I daze this brainstorm and then I untap, what's my plan after that? Because I, right. I don't think he's a reasonable one. I mean, I expect that he is looking at the exile zone and determining what the likely pile is. Yeah. My guess is that there's a bunch of cyclers. Um. Yeah. Notably, it could just be. Okay, so Street Wraith, consider LED. Looks like we're I... going to kill here. We're going to cycle a street ra- cycle two Wraiths, crack LED, blue, 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 kill, something like that. If he puts... Yeah. He has to put back two cards, goes to four cards. But we can kill with two cards left in the deck. We don't need to go to a completely empty library, notably. Right. So it might be cycle, cycle... Yep. But this draws into the two cards he put back, which is the consider and the force of will, and the consider finds the Thassus Oracle, and the Thassus Oracle should kill. Yes, a consider can even mill the force of will in response to the cycle. Uh, yeah. Which yeah, will no. probably put a pact navigation into his hand. Yeah. Yep. Since I figured it out. <laughs> or we watched Twinless figure it out, I guess. We didn't do a All lot. All right. <laughs> Over in sideboarding. Uh, it looks like we have a Thoughtseize. Um, is that a Spell Pierce? Yeah, and... new, new, the Neo Spell Pierce art. Right. And uh, four, uh, four Red Amontal Blasts and Pyroblasts. Yeah. Um, I'm curious if uh, if we'll see Max Dorshin, like fully board out Doomsday and just try to play the tempo game plan. We've heard time and time again that Delver is favored versus, like, very, very, very favored versus Doomsday. So I wouldn't be surprised if Max tries to sideboard into a, a Delver light deck. He cuts all the Doomsdays and the Thoracle and, like, the weird clunky stuff and just boards in all these counter spells. Yeah. And just extra thought sees and just tries to attack his opponent to death. Yeah, maybe takes out some of these Baleful Strix and just tries to kill with a Murktide. Yeah, kill the Murktide or a Hermit. Uh... On the normal Doomsday side, there's a lot of stuff you could do. I'm not sure how much he wants to do. I think he will play Duress. Um, Cavern of Souls seems like an easy one. Cavern seems like a great... Well... In a matchup where your opponent has a bunch of counter spells, especially... Cavern's only good if you pass the turn. He might need to well because if your doomsday resolves then you then they don't have force yeah. um notably there are a bunch of like rebs and stuff in the coming in that's side that's true yeah okay so yeah they probably do have cavern i was thinking it's just a land that doesn't cast her cantrips but reb is a pretty important reason right. um I, I don't think the force of negations will come in they probably come in in like the true doomsday mirror i right. knowing back to the deck list i can't imagine you want to be boarding in force negation where your opponent could just cast the kind of region yeah Okay. Looks like a much more potent hand Max for Max really this time. At, at drawing Temporal Mastery in his opening hands. Right. But yeah. Has it for one ponder? Twinless Twin sitting on, again, half of the combo and hoping to ponder into a Doomsday. Yep. Yeah, Force of Will is a great pickup for Max, and uh, all of a sudden this Temporal Mastery is a great card. Both players casting turn one ponder, just try to sculpt their hands, find what they need. Yep, I imagine... Both Max players finding Force of Will. <laughs> Max Dorsen turboing out a Merc Head Regent, Twinless turboing out a Doomsday. Ooh. Red Elemental Breast is a nice pickup. Yeah. We have this Consider. We see both players just sitting on a bunch of Remission, and I think, I think these are the sort of situations where you'd probably be more favored as the tempo deck. I think it's easier to resolve your Murktide region than it is to resolve your Doomsday. Yeah. Can't fluster storm a Murktide region. Double Pyroblast. 
Max, a little light on answers to actual Doomsday, but with double Pyro Blast, it's probably easy to not let it resolve. I'm, I think I would have flustered that. It's possible. Notably, I mean, Twilos doesn't have a ton of protection on his side. We don't know if he boarded in the second Thassa's Oracle. I'm not 100% sure which matchups that comes in for. So That's true. We might not be able to freely pitch uh, the Thassa's Oracle to this Force of Will. And if that's the case, he might just be planning on firing off this Brainstorm and then just holding this Fluster to uh, to try to resolve this Doomsday. Okay, well, I, take, I have a, a new thought. I'm really surprised he didn't Brainstorm in response. Uh, that's the reason. Because if uh, Max Dorshin had tried to fight, he could have uh, gotten a two-for-one off his fluster. That is true. I'm not enough of a blue player to see these lines. <laughs> and we see the end step in the storm. And Max may be deciding to fire off one of these rebs with a spell pierce. I'd be a little... A little I, I think you snap reb. Really? Uh, I can't trip. Yep. Uh, it feels a little bit scary to go like almost full shields down. He does have force plus days back up. But is that going to be enough right here? I think we'll find out. Um, He's got the days plenty taken care of with this Dark Ritual and three lands. Uh, he's got a four, uh, a Fluster Storm and potentially a Force. We don't know if this Force is castable, right? Right. Looks like it's going to be Force and then Force gets Flustered. And then this Doomsday is just going to resolve. This is the exact kind of situation that maybe, again, not a blue player, might might be playing too scared, but I do like converting the, the that Reb on that Brainstorm, but like tapping out there felt really scary to me, considering that your only real card at that point is a Force of Will. Your opponent has plenty of mana, this daze isn't really going to do anything, so maybe having the double permission backup would have been like more comfortable. But I mean, you don't know that there's a Dark Ritual in Thomas's is- hand, so if you're looking at Doomsday as a three-mana spell, I think it's okay. Maybe the days are more relevant, yeah. Um, also probably hinges on what the Ponder did. Um, if the Ponder shuffled, then there's obviously much more incentive to try to uh, deny the, the sculpting. Um, yeah. I think I think anytime you have two Rebs, you just yeah. have to... Especially with the Reb, Reb, Pierce, Days hand, I think you do want to start converting your cards on your opponent's cards. It juices up your Merc Tide Regent as well. Max yep. need Max does need to do something. He can't just sit on his hands forever. So I, I think I do agree with the uh, the Reb line. It just ended up being very bad for him. Yeah. His opponent had A plus B. Plus uh, Fluster. Now the next, so... next question is, can we kill with a Street Wraith and one mana? It's a little bit more awkward because we can't actually use this mana without shuffling our pile, right? Um, that is true. I wonder if it was correct for him to fetch before this Doomsday Resolve. I but think sometimes you probably means uh, there's not a second Oracle. Because now there's a land in the pile. Oh, maybe not. I guess, yeah, you don't need to draw. It looks Okay, it looks like he's just going to do go with a pass the turn pile, but he's going to thought seize to make sure, the, make sure the coast is clear. Because Daze is going to be a a beating. Or maybe it won't be. I have to imagine this just gets dazed, right? Uh, well, the Merktide doesn't matter. But I think this Brainstorm is better than your days right now. Your point is three lands in play needs to resolve a two-mana spell next turn to win the That's game, true. Right? Okay. I, I was just trying to figure out why uh, the days hadn't already been put on the stack. Uh, probably Max Storchen just looking at the Exile, figuring out what the pile Oh, is. sure. Yes. Yeah. We have a lot of information that was revealed. Yeah. Fully taking into account. Uh, usually at this at these stages of the game, you can deduce mostly what is in your opponent's deck and hand at this at this point. Yeah. I'm I'm sure uh as an experienced Doomsday pilot, Max knows exactly how the sideboarding guide goes and yeah. and whether or not this this uh thought season is the card he wants to daze. Yeah. But yeah, no, I don't see a lot of avenues for Max Dorshin to win this game. This feels a lot like the uh the Oh, so that was that pause was the thoughts he's resolving, taking away the Merktide Regent. And then <laughs> classic Thoughtseize. Who was it that really stacked their deck this turn? 
Well, it doesn't really. Not I feel like you're not matter. supposed to take the dragon there. I don't. Yeah, I don't think this dragon matters unless you're not winning the game next turn, right? Right. I guess maybe given the context of Max Torch, I, I don't know. We don't know the last three cards of Twinless is. Uh, high oh, I guess that uh, there has to be a cavern, or this yeah. Reb would have been taken. Um, oh wow, Thoughtseize is. Thoughtseize is. Pretty, pretty good. We're going to find out real quick if Twinless has the other Thoracal boarded in, right? Or even put it into the pile. He might have not put it in the pile. Yeah, if Thoracal's exiled, then this Thoughtseize just wins the game. And if it doesn't, it takes away a Force Will, and that might win the game. Yeah. Taking oh, away. I, I think that there is a Thoracal in the exile zone. Yeah. Knowing deck, knowing the deck lists, you have to, if there's an exiled Thoracal, you have to just take that uh yeah, <laughs> oh. Max Torsion immediately wins. It looks like uh, either Twinless didn't board it in or more likely Twinless did board it in and didn't put it in this pile. Right. I, I think if it's not, I don't I don't think I, well, maybe Max knows, but. Um... Because you know the deck list, so you are aware that he has access to a second Oracle. If you don't see it exiled, do you think he didn't board it in? I I don't know the heuristics on when you're supposed to board in this second Thoracle, and I'm sure Mac, Max Torsion does. So right. I, I don't doubt that that that, that, that Thossies was correct. Yeah. This is the hard game for the tempo build, being on a draw against the faster deck. Um, but I don't really see anything that improves on the draw. Maybe this Night's Whisper gets worse, but yeah, that depends I mean, on what else he cut. Wouldn't be surprised if nice whisper like just doesn't make the cut for the tempo plan i mean divination for two mana might just be free now if we cut these dark rituals and stuff first i thought i saw it in a flyby at some point but it's definitely possible okay these are some hands max orchard's hand looking real good twinless's hand looking a little worse for where we have this one cantrip to find some action and one uh, thought season for some disruption, but thought season the t again. We're going back to the uh, the tempo versus uh, normal doomsday strategy. Thought season is a lot worse when your opponent doesn't have to cast doomsday. Yeah, your opponent is like, okay, you take this murktide region. I have a lot of other cards in my deck with text versus thought seizing the one doomsday away. Yeah, I wonder if we see force get taken or murktide. Yeah, yeah, it looks like take with a threat. Well, makes sense considering Twinless is kind of on almost on multi five here. Well, ideas we can cast this Ideas Unbound and filter for a draw three, discard three. It's not exactly where you want to be, but well, we can convert this LED into a real card, and <laughs> I guess that's true. Th well, those while well, those cards are important combo pieces, they don't need to be. Uh... Yeah, they can be in the graveyard. Yeah, they can, they can be in the graveyard. Don't say can grab them from anywhere that's not exiled. Oh, duress. Duress doesn't even hit Max's creature. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised to see this mobile helmet come down next turn as well. I think this ponder, oh, this reb goes away. Makes yeah. sense. Ooh. Ooh. Max wow. Torsion really good at drawing these Marktide regions after getting them thought seized. Looks like this is going to get disputed, I have to imagine. I think Max will force. Maybe not. Maybe that's a little loose. I think, think you should force. It. I think you should probably pitch the per ponder. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. You have an extra force for backup if, in case your mana leak is, doesn't work. And if it does, this does work, then we have rolling up Merkhead region. Notably, maybe the force is a little bit of a spew, but it gets the, the Merkhead region in play a little bit sooner as well. So Max just needs to draw like a fetch land or something. Yeah, I think if you don't, I think the issue with not forcing there is you're really leaning on this ponder to do work for you. Otherwise, you're going to force uh, a discard spell or, you know, trade a force for a counter. The other one's to get on board, and Hermit is both disruption and a counter spell. Yeah, and like we talked about previously, this Mulva well Hermit, a little bit hard for the Doomsday decks to deal with, being an uncounterable mana leak for Doomsday. You got to have cards like this Dark Ritual or something to, to try to fight through it. Ponder. Ponder finds card would be nice. Ponder finds Ponder. Yeah. Hmm. Looks like he might just be on the uh, cast Merkhead region next turn and have force up. Although, you want to keep up a malevolent herb activation, so 
Yeah. Maybe he has a land as well to uh, to pair with that plan. Dispute is um, counters blue spells. Oh, here's a fair ideas unbound. You hate to see it or love to see it, depending on who you're cheering for here. <laughs> Draw three, discard three for two mana. Not extremely powerful. Duress. Notably, again, we see the I second. I wonder if draft. you hermit that. It doesn't hit Murktide. Who cares? Well, it takes your force of will. I mean, you have a hermit. Who needs That's force true. Will? I guess all the knowing that all the disputes are in, you want to. Um... Yeah, the, I mean, tapping out here is a little bit rough for uh, for Twinless Twin too. He had double dispute, and he's just going to get Murktide regent, and he he sees the writing on the wall. Oh, Cavern of oh. Souls for Murktide. <laughs> Cavern on Dragon. Ponder into uh, what's the best possible here? Thought Seize, Reb, something like that. I think Flusterstorm is the best possible, but I don't think he has any in his list. Uh, any any interaction point, yeah, would be good. But we're about to play a five five or a eight plus plus five plus five Merktide region in addition to like being able to leave up this malevolent hermit attack for two, and then Twinless has to win on the same turn, right? He's at he's yeah. already at fourteen, going to twelve. Max is going to have 10 power in play. Yep. Tall order. Yeah, Twilight mm -hmm. needs a lot to get out of this one. Come on, Cavern on Dragon. You got to do it. You don't want to get this Merc Dead Force of Willed. This Cavern's not doing anything else. I mean, you just trade your Hermit for that, but yeah. I think I think Max would be happy if uh, Twinless had Force of Will here. <laughs> yeah, if even if he didn't have the cavern, going down to yeah. one card is a combo. Uh, I mean, absolutely, but it's also how many times does he get to do this? Right. How many times do you get to Cavern of Souls in your Mark Tide region? Not a lot of decks uh, get to, to get to play both those cards. Probably multiple times a league for Max. Yeah, for for this deck specifically. Oh, this thought season. Ponder. Not going to be able to. LED, LED is in the graveyard. I don't know. I don't know if we can get enough mana. Yeah, this Dark Ritual puts him up to five that's, or four. That's not enough to, to cast Doomsday through a Malevolent or Hermit, let alone also win in the same turn. Yep. Yeah. Extortion takes it a pretty clean 2-0 here from uh, Max with 1x, Max Gilmore. Yeah. That was uh, pretty decisive. The tempo cards really came through, and um, you know, I'm I I'm always a little bit happy to see Doomsday lose, even if Doomsday's winning. But <laughs> hey, I mean, uh, the, the the creatures won this time, so that's a pretty yeah, good sign. The person attacking and blocking won, which I think is a is a W in terms of the, the Doomsday haters. Um, <laughs> exactly. Looked like you were right about your uh, your read on the Tempo Doomsday deck looking a little bit better. We saw. Uh, Twinless Twin take game one, but game two and three would definitely definitely seemed pretty reasonable to be able to. We we don't know for certain that uh, Max Torsion boarded out all the, the whole Doomsday plan, but it certainly felt looked and felt like it. It the looked like his deck was was blue cards and and uh, disruption that yeah, were black cards. Bored into like a bad Delver deck, and bad Delver looks like it maybe still has a favorable Doomsday matchup. Especially if you draw Murktide Regents every time their opponent takes them away. Yes. <laughs> Uh, we're coming up to a really critical third match here where Twinless is on a uh, uh, win or go home. Yeah. Uh, and two matches here. Max Gilmore firmly in the driver's seat. And this is some spice uh, from Max Gilmore. It looks like we have Garuda Bomberman. Bringing, um, this, I don't think this is Garuda, right? We got one drops in here. Do we? Yeah. All right. I okay. The, mislabeled by, uh, by MTG Melee. Got it. Uh, I have fallen victim to the MTG melee mislabel. Um, there <laughs> we got, are we got one drops. Yeah, we have the Oriox Salvagers combo uh, with uh, Lion's Eye Diamond and Walking Ballista, allowing Max to generate infinite mana and uh, present a lethal uh, walkie shooty thing. Uh, it looks like some Karns, Chalice the Void, Urza Saga, of course, and an artifact strategy, and some new cards in uh is that reckless automaton patchwork automaton patchwork automaton and cap cannoneer 
I I like the bomber man. I actually shipped a Max list. He DM'd me before this event, and he was like, "What's your bomber man list?" I sent him something similar to this. He made some ob- some uh, adjustments. He Max also a bomber man player of note. Uh, but I've been really enjoying both Patchwork Automaton and Kappa Cannoneer as sort of like an aggro beatdowny game plan that uh, Barman really hasn't had access to before. Yeah, this used to be a mentor, uh, monastery mentor deck, yeah. and uh, was maybe the least explosive mentor deck, uh, where it could put a mentor in play and two turns later your opponent might still be alive. Yes, um, I would agree with that a lot. Mentor was always like pretty okay in this list, but we see from the traditional list, it has shaved down a lot on like the zero drops that were really good with Mentor. We have two opals of the usual three or four. This deck used to play up to eight baubles. Now we're playing two. Uh, it, oh, wow. I think with the addition of stuff like Urza Saga, Patchwork Automaton, Kappa Cannoneer, it's fully shifted into a deck that has like a wide variety of game plans. You can kill out of nowhere with Salvagers. You have your Karn locks with uh, Searing Bridge, Mycos, and Vladis. You can beat down with Automaton, the Kappa Cannoneers. I also just, uh, a, a, a Barman quirk, I, I'll gush about this deck for way too long if we let me. <laughs> I, I love this deck, but I really like that Saga can find a different both halves of your maybe not both halves but the two cards that both work with salvagers uh, with led and um uh being able to find aether spell bomb you can draw your whole deck really classic oh, nice. spell. <laughs> uh it looks like uh twinless twin is on jeskai control with yes uh... i think we lost uh the the third deck list for uh for twinless twin so we can't break it down but he looks like he's on the uh, the jeskai days undoing whole whole breacher list yep no force of will for this patchwork automaton and that might be a problem in a hurry it looks like given uh twinless's hand here he might get beaten down pretty quick here max is gonna untap make this like a three three yeah twinless does not have a lot to contend with that maybe hope that max doesn't draw a single of the artifact and block with a uh, hull breacher on turn three but seems a little unlikely well, if he gets to turn four, he can just uh, time twister and draw seven cards, leave Max Dorshin with one. He could just kill him by end step pull breacher untap days when doing. Oh, Ooh. Also, well, I guess that spell is probably completely fine given Max Dorshin's hand. You get notably Patrick Tomton triggers on cast, not resolution like Kappa Cannoneer does. Mm. So you still get the uh, the three three trade off being that it doesn't trigger off art. Oh, the, mm. speaking of turtles. This is going to get ugly real quick. We might not even get to the uh, Days Undoing section here. It's like we're just going to slam slam a turtle attack for four. This is a, a new card from Kamigawa Commander. Um, Been making a lot of waves in uh, in Legacy. Card. It's very powerful in, art, in almost every artifact-based strategy. The, the the new true name as it were ward four mana you have to pay four additional mana to target it with anything and that's a lot yeah a prismatic ending would be a nice draw to clean up this two drop except that card also has ward so two. that's going to be four, four mana. mana to kill a patchwork automaton and i don't think we're going to get to four mana well we take uh looks like what nine ten eleven here it might go to one might think that he has a chance with going to one and then whole breacher untap undoing draw like double plow. I don't even think that's enough mana with ward six combined. But also notably, Max Dorshin has Odawara in his hand. Oh, how about we both draw seven? <laughs> yeah, I can easily just bounce this whole breacher. And by the way, your turn's over. Yes, and your turn uncounterable. Not that you could counter it uh, anyway, being at one life. Did he have lethal if he just bounced the LED? Uh. Um, can Odawar target your own stuff? Probably. Hmm. Oh, that's actually a really good question. A lot of these new cards are templated so no- that they can't bounce your own. Notably, also, um, Twinless just had three mana open until end step, so he might have just had Plow for the Patchwork Automaton. Sure. It's pretty reasonable. I think this play is perfectly fine, putting your opponent to one, and then <laughs> Odawar just... <laughs> Yeah, I, I think even with getting seven treasures, I think he's just dead there. Actually, no, because you could draw, get seven treasures, draw plow, and pay five treasures to plow the the turtle, and then chump block the 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 the, the Patrick Automaton at least. Or potentially, if there's dress downs in the list, 
Oh, that's uh, true. That's true. a card that gets around Ward. Drift down, plow, plow. All right, moving on to the sideboard here after a very, very quick game one. Kind of the, the running theme here, I guess. Um, Barman, not a deck that gets to sideboard a lot because you have this Karn wish board. You have a ton of artifacts. You have some cool ones to wish for. Some newer ones like Portable Hole. It's a card that really works well in this this deck. Uh, yeah. Being able to exile stuff like Null Rods or Collector Oofs. Um, but in terms of like real sideboard cards, we have what? Swords of Plowshares, maybe? If you want to like try to beat the whole Breacher plan on that axis. Yeah, I, I think uh, to see Max Dorsen just ship back the same 60, though. I think he'll probably have Lavinia come in just to uh, turn off uh, opposing Force of Wills. That's maybe reasonable. Uh, looks like there's a Wear Tear coming in and in the opening hand for. Not surprising to see win. what looks like fairly stock Just Guy Breacher. Get some wear tears, some dress down, stuff like that. Ooh, and Max Sorsen's hand going to make a very big um, Petro Automaton very quickly. Yep. Not surprised to see that let go with the dress down in hand. Potentially yeah. can line up dress down plus uh, in the dress down, untap wear tear or something like that. Or untap to yep. vary it. Uh, notably, Twinless did keep a one lander, though, sitting on the end step here. Yep. A little dicey. We have to be untapping. Catching yeah, this brainstorm. You gotta take your draw step. I don't think you get to fire this off end step. That's very a very scary proposition. If Toilins can find some lands here though, then he's looking a lot better than he was last game. Yeah, Max would uh, potentially like some lands to go with these cards. Oh, wow. Does fire off end step. I'm a little surprised. Does not find a fetch land. Does find a land and a ponder. So can, can we do get to continue to play magic? Yeah. Not instantly brainstorm locked and dead. I think some of these planeswalkers have to stay in hand to pitch to force. Yeah, we got double force here, which is going to need it with double Karn on the other side. Looks like he's putting back both planeswalkers. I mean, I guess he's going to redraw cards. one of them. So I guess the Narset's the pitch card. Most of these cards pitch to force anyway. He's going to have to redraw all. Of, I guess the Ponder. He might not have to redraw the other one. Oh like wow! Might, looks like he might tr dress down and then maybe try to spike the third line for the Teferi. And if he doesn't, he'll maybe uh, wear. If he doesn't, he'll still have the Shatter lined up. But we'll Shatter the patchwork. Yikes. Second patchwork's pretty scary. Wouldn't be surprised to see just patchwork pedal pedal hit you. <laughs> Although this... Max does also want to think about like trying to line up these Karns in future turns, but I think just like the beatdown plan in these first couple of turns is more than reasonable. I have to imagine you cast patchwork and two lotus petals. Yeah. Um these Just Guy decks sometimes have access to sweepers like Pyroclasm. Um, so you definitely want to get them out of uh, uh, out of two toughness range. But yeah, he's Maybe able to do that without expending any of these pedals. Land plus Meltdown might be a little scary. Ooh, we see this one even get forced. That is a great exchange for, for Max Dorsion with, oh, yeah. with double game-ending Karns in hand. We're just going to pump up a 4-4. And notably, that getting forced does probably signal to Max Dorsion that there is no land melt to own for two or whatever. Yeah. Very scary. Scary card that now Max Dorsion doesn't have to play around. Yeah, we're going to end up dress down here. Maybe try to spike land three underneath this Teferi and then Teferi the patchwork. If not, you can always just wear tear it and solve the force. Ending. All right. Are you casting this ponder? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Turns out the answer is very quick. Yes. Yes. I, you got. You, you can't play scared as a blue player. You gotta. You gotta hit more land drops. Yeah. Okay. Easily hits more land drops, and we're still playing a game of magic here. Yeah. It sets up uh, ending as opposed to wear tear. Which is more valuable? Looks like he. Values I think the wear tear because it can tag a saga plus an artifact. Yeah, the ability to destroy Saga is probably what pushes keeping uh, Tear in your hand. Yeah. Oh. Mono 
automatons for Max Dorshin. Not finding any time to get these Azorius signets. He'd, he'd love to cast one of these signets so he could get towards a Karn, but he just keeps trying these Patchwork Automatons instead. It's just going to be Teferi plus Teferi. I wouldn't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't Teferi know. Teferi plus isn't the end of the world staring down a 1-1 one, one Automaton. Yeah, but what if you have to get Force of Negation? Yeah. You pitch your brainstorm and you have nothing? But, like, what else are we doing here? Passing what? with hard cast force, casting brainstorm and stuff. I like brainstorming now, especially because we found mana sources. This yeah. whole breacher could even uh, ambush the patchwork. Oh, looks like it's going to be shuffled away. Wants to keep up. I wonder if keeping wear tear. I guess you're, pro you're most likely going to have to fetch here, so you just keep the, the good cards. We finally get down a Signet, which means we can cast a Karn. Maybe, probably next turn. I don't think sacking all your pedals is... Oh, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe we're casting another Signet? Uh, casting another Signet. I can see that, yeah. Exchanging a yeah. temporary source of mana for a permanent one. That makes a lot of sense. And now you just have full ability to cast Karn without losing any pedals the following turn. And your opponent's at 10 with yeah. a... Also, four, this four. plays around a, like, a, like a Flash. Yeah, Hole Breacher. Yeah. yeah. We see the whole creature mm -hmm. redrawn here, not even shuffled away. What's well, a blue or, card? Yeah, that's fair. This Teferi might be more relevant. We have this Ware, which I have to imagine is finally going to kill this Patchwork Automaton. We're going to pay the, the, the iron price for that. Force this Karn, pitching something, and then... I expect we're going to Fawn hardcast this Karn. And just take five, go to five. Yeah. Seems a little bit risky. I mean, take five, go to four, even. Does it really matter if you're at when you're nine down, versus. Yeah, when you're putting down three patchworks already. They, they don't have like a lot of other cards that can kill you. I guess Walking Ballista is a pretty scary card, but. Yeah. Walking Ballista can get you Turtle. You're in a one shot range from a Turtle at this point. I mean, now we, we drew a land so we can Teferi bounce this patchwork. All right. This is working out okay. Though so that might it have us okay dead to Karn. this Karn, actually. Not dead, dead, but it's not going to be. Well, great. Karn can fetch Ballista. Well, he's at three, not one. Dead That's over true. turns. He can find another Force of Will with the no cantrips in his hand. <laughs> he's going to just draw Force of Will. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. So, still playing the game here. Looks like we're going to go patchwork into Karn, maybe? I guess you cast the patchwork first. Yeah, cast the patchwork first anyway, so Karn doesn't trigger it, but you might want to force it on the way back down or something. I can't imagine you do with the wear tear lined up. Yeah, but Max doesn't know about any of that. Sure. Yeah, definitely correct sequencing, but... Yeah, takes a look here. Cast a Karn, gets rid of another pedal. You have plenty of mana at this point with yeah. Sweet opal double signet. You know, both players kept a one land hand. <laughs> Max Orson's one land hand a little bit better. Now, notably, yeah, both players on actual empty at this point because this wear terror needs to target this patchwork automaton. Yep. Uh -oh. oh, that's a. Oh, uh, okay. If we, no, that doesn't exactly do a lot. This Kappa Canyon is likely unblockable. A lot of artifacts in Max Torsion's deck. It does allow um, him to block the... Oh. Uh, oh, that's better than <laughs> Kappa Cannon here. Not many things I would expect to hear are better than Kappa Cannon here. But, but... Uh, Ballista for two when your opponent's at two life. Definitely up there. Opponent needs so... Cards that don't exist, I think, because you need to answer this patchwork and also counter this ballista. Uh, yeah. You need to cast actual counter spell and then cast swords to plowshares, and then pay the two ward. Well, you can cycle Shark Typhoon for a, a, a chum blocker. But... Uh, that's true, but that costs three mana, right? Oh, right. okay. We just need the counter spell, right. which you know is probably not in his deck. And Max, uh, oh, uh, he could cycle into dress down. Oh, that would be a play. That's that's in out here. That's actually it's very heads up. Yeah, 
if he has a second dress down in his deck. And that looks like what he's going to do. He could also brainstorm into force. And then you're still dead to the... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, to add yeah. jump block. Uh, and draws land and dead. The Ballista is going to do it, and Max Torsion oh. wins the Battle of the Maxes with a very decisive 3-0 over, uh, over Twinless Twin here. Yeah, those were some intense games, uh, really well fought by both players, but the uh, Max with 1x took it down in the end. Indeed. Um, uh, Shoutouts to both players, excellent members of the Legacy community, both of them. Uh, big fans of both of them. Um, Absolutely. Right. Really put on uh, some a variety of options for us to see tonight with uh, a lot of different archetypes represented. Uh, no death and taxes, surprising, with both of us on, but um, we do we really, really showcase what the format's doing post-Ragavan ban and uh, some of the new exciting cards that are out there keeping the format uh, fun to play. Yeah, for sure. Um, big shout outs to not only our players, but to Honorog as well for, for hosting the event love to see all these commentators we saw on uh, in the last event i believe on rocks calling it what the coverage commentator like, bonanza i think their bonanza yeah we saw the members of the dark depths podcast on yeah. love to watch them and i'm looking Michael forward to watching, yeah looking forward to watching many more of these uh commentator bonanza events getting to see some of legacy's brightest minds and people like us in the commentating seats <laughs> absolutely <laughs> 